We're just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? Hey, welcome back to O'Reilly Radio 130. This is episode C, Law and Order, recorded Friday, October 28th, 2016. We're dismantling current events for you. Jimmy, the most irrational conversations that make you go, oh, really? I'm your host, Andy Cowan, with Stephen Griffith and David O'Connor. Okay, <clears throat> and now we're into Law and <clears throat> Order. And this is pretty much all Bundy all the time. Law and Order, White Privilege <sighs> Edition. This really is the White Privilege Edition. Okay, so... Huh. Gentlemen, um, one of you break it down. Enjoy. The Bundys are are not guilty. <laughs> well, let's found be not guilty by by a trial of their peers of through yeah, threat of force here. holding a federal facility with firearms <laughs> and preventing federal workers from performing their duties at the Malheur Refuge. Yeah, back in January this year, a group of armed anti-government militants occupied the Mailer Wildlife Refuge in Oregon. A bird watching sanctuary with very little strategic value. In none. The, you know, if you're yeah, none. <laughs> we we looked. There's none. There's nothing out there except birds. Um Yeah. And apparently maybe some grazing land or something like that, which is what the Bundy, uh, Bundy clan was all about. Uh, now, the, this was uh, Cliven Bundy. Was it Cliven? No, no Ammon. it was, it was Ammon Bundy. Ammon and... Brian. Ammon and the others, uh, the youngest one, Curls. Uh, they, they took on the, uh, <laughs> the refuge for really vague reasons. You know, I'm... Their, whatever manifesto that they had was completely overshadowed by, you know, the guys at um, um, Cards Against Humanity sending, you know, 55-gallon drums of uh, personal lubrication and uh, bags of little gummy dicks. Lots and lots of dildos and gummy dicks and all sorts of things to these, these guys. Uh, they, they, were not, they were not looked upon favorably uh, by the nation as a whole, and I think they really kind of made us all look like jerks on the world stage. We we looked at this, you know, emerging situation for like five weeks. Yeah, it, 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 was, it was quite a while. It was in every show that we did for five weeks there, um, maybe six, and we we're just like, why why haven't why haven't they just gone in and take them out? You know, and we were we didn't want this to be a Waco. You know, we definitely did not want that to happen, and neither did the feds. So they avoided that as, as much as possible. Um, there was, um, I think it was $6 million worth of damage to the facility. Yeah. Plus destruction of cultural artifacts and above and beyond lots of all that stuff. I'm trying to, trying to find, uh, find specific numbers, because I... My newsfeed is just flooded with different outlets and different takes on it and, and a little bit of different here and there. Um, but uh, the jury found all Oregon standoff defendants not guilty of federal conspiracy and gun charges. Mm. They did not conspire to go to this refuge and, and take it by force. Right. I have... Uh, uh, oceanfront property near the Malheur Refuge that I am selling <laughs> at bargain basement prices. <laughs> All yeah. jurors on that jury are welcome to put in their bids now. <laughs> um, there's there's an updated uh, version of one of the stories. Oregon Oregon militants found not guilty in quote unbelievably truly astonishing verdict. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So a jury Thursday delivered the stunning uh, news across the across the board acquittal of the leaders and participants of the Mailer National Wildlife Refuge occupation and a remarkable blow to the federal government as it tries to tamp down on national movement led by the Devada family to open public lands to ranchers, miners, and loggers. And I'm just going to add, and not pay any taxes on it. Mm -hmm. 
the verdict's finding Ammon Bundy, older brother, Ryan Bundy, and five others not guilty of a federal conspiracy drew relation from defense attorneys who spent five weeks arguing that the armed takeover amounted to a time-honored tradition of First Amendment protest and civil disobedience. Just let that sink in for a second. Uh, especially, again, let, let's step this out a little bit over to what's going on at Sandy Rock. Yeah. And now bring it back. Yeah, because th these are white boys. These are these are nice, good Mormon boys with guns. Okay. And they're rich Mormon boys. Who threatened the lives of any federal officer who came near them, who actually had an insane friend who decided to draw down on federal officers and got shot because of it. Um, he, he did death by, death by cop. Yeah. He's expecting to be a martyr, no doubt. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <sighs> so the Bundy brothers still face prosecution in Nevada with their father, Cliven Bundy, uh, all accused in the 2014 standoff at the Patriarch's ranch over unpaid grazing fees that pitted the family against and their supporters against the Bureau of Land Management. Uh, the BLM, that's the government-based, not the Black Lives Matter thing. Um, the Oregon prosecutors set, sat silently in front of their boss, U.S. Attorney Billy Williams. Billy D. Williams? No, just Billy Williams. No, And the head, <laughs> the, head of the head of the FBI in Oregon, uh, Greg Bretzig, as the judge announced the not guilty pleas one by one. Uh, this is... This is crazy. So, uh, as we'll as you dig it. in, it's just like, well, how did this happen? Yeah. So, prosecutors took two weeks to present their case, finishing with the display of the more than thirty guns seized. Uh, an FBI agent testified that sixteen thousand six hundred and thirty-six live rounds and nearly seventeen hundred spent casings were found. Uh, the group seized the refuge, established armed patrols, and vetted those who visited. The government argued all of the defendants realized they were preventing the federal employees from going to work and thus were part of a conspiracy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this case is not a whodunit. Assistant U.S. Attorney Ethan Knight said in his closing statement, arguing that the group decided to take over a federal workplace that didn't belong to them. But jurors rejected that argument. And under the instructions given them, given to them by Judge Brown, if there was no conspiracy, they could not find the defendants guilty of firearms charges. Ah, so this this is wrongful prosecution on the wrong charge, basically. They brought the wrong charges mm -hmm. against these people. It's like, <clears throat> yeah, they're guilty. Oh boy, are they guilty. Just not of exactly what you tried them for. Idiots. Yeah. Ugh. And of course, you know, gross incompetence aside, this ends up also being a giant story, even if it isn't actually what is behind it. Everyone's claiming, you know, this is what white privilege looks like. And they're not wrong either. No. Because otherwise, these people would not have been allowed to occupy a federal building with weapons for over a month and still live to tell the tale. Any other color. You know, I'm, I'm reminded of that uh, the Family Guy sketch, you know, where's, you know, Peter's all dressed up in, in some ethnic garb and, you know, the Border Patrol's got a little card and it's got the different colors on it and it's like white, no, he's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, different shades, you know. That... It rings very much of that. If they were any other color. Would not have been taken alive. No. And anybody that's trying to tell you different has not been paying attention or is trying to sell you some land in Oregon. Again, I, anybody who anybody who doesn't believe that, I go to that quote from, from a Game of Thrones that I love. If you think this has a happy ending, you haven't been paying attention. Huh. That's good. It's very good. This is all going to end in tears. I just know it. Yeah, but the thing is, not their tears. It's our mm. tears. <laughs> yep. That's just horrible. So, I I don't know. Yeah, okay, so Fed's released pictures of $6 million in damage. 
that was out on Raw Story. Uh, photos released by the Fish and Wildlife Service show protesters trash buildings and damaged facilities with occupation um, occupations overall costs running at least six million. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service released new photos on the scene of the 41-day standoff at Wildlife Refuge in eastern Oregon, showing the protesters left behind trash buildings, damaged facilities, and compromised septic system uh, and government offices with missing possessions. Now, here's, here's the part that kills me. This just kills me. Ammon Bundy said the plan was to take ownership of the refuge by occupying it for a period of time and then turn it over to local officials to use as they saw fit. Bundy also testified that the occupiers carried guns because they would have been arrested immediately otherwise and to protect themselves against possible government attack. They literally admitted that they took this with a plan and held it with firearms. Not guilty. Literal testimony to the jurors. Ladies and gentlemen, 2016. White privilege has a face. I really wish I had been on that jury. (laughs) Oh my god. I <clears throat> they were on YouTube shown defacing the property shown removing security cameras you know the actual destruction of government federal property beyond that that was actually testimony in the court he he laid it out there they basically admitted to the whole thing hmm oh <sighs> It brings out some emotions and some anger, Holmes said, referring to the reactions from the federal employees who have returned to the refuge. Quote, they are thrilled to be back. These are the people who generally don't become biologists (laughs) to be in the public sphere. They love creatures and places and are passionate about doing their jobs. Attorneys representing the jailed activists and supporters of the occupation have argued that the public should not trust the official damage reports from the FBI and other federal agencies. Critics have recently pointed to formal allegations that FBI agents may have lied and removed evidence in the fatal shooting of protester Lavoie uh, Vinicum as a clear indication of the government's dishonest tactics in its investigation and ongoing prosecution. There's literal video. Mm Mm-hmm. They let him reach for his concealed weapon on three separate occasions before they shot him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They gave him... They gave him a chance. They gave him several... So much (laughs) He had several chances. Again, I also remember the guys doing... I mean, I watched some of the live streaming and stuff that was done by some of the actual reporters and reporters that were out there, and they were talking to people, what they were saying, what they were doing, and I'm going, you literally acquitted these people for shit they admitted to on camera. He, the, a prosecutor's dream case going, no, this is exactly what you said. I didn't know I was being filmed. You were staring directly into the camera as you said it. it it's on, it's on your actual, YouTube channel, sir. It's a YouTube video <laughs> interview with you identified in the beginning. <laughs> I, I don't understand how they could have lost it. I just don't understand. It's a it's a slam dunk. A first year prosecutor could, you know, fresh out of college, would, would have been be able like, to nail these people. A first year prosecutor, straight out of college, would look at this and go, I have just now made my career. It's like, thank you. Oh, wow. You guys are nice. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and, and the testimony from. I'm at a loss for words. Just yeah. lost. <laughs> oh. There are none. For this, is, this, as we said, this is the perfect example, and I do mean this in truth, when it comes to not the enforcement of law, but the continuation of that process, because it doesn't stop when people get arrested. This shows, furthermore, yes, white privilege. The amount of crap you can get away with if you've got the right skin tone. 
possibly also are believed to believe in the correct god. Yeah, I'm throwing that in there too. Well, but yeah. skin tone is the primary concern here. The agency spent roughly $2 million relocating employees and families throughout the region, according to Holm, who said many face threats from activists online and in person in Haney County. Some anti-government protesters confronted workers in their local towns of Burns, and some refuge employees reported being followed and stalked at their homes. Strange cars were parked out in front of homes. Uh, there were encounters at grocery stores where people were confronted. Uh, said home, adding that the government had intel suggesting one federal refuge employee was targeted for kidnapping. The Wildlife Service also spent roughly $2.3 million on law enforcement and estimates it will spend $1.7 million to restore damaged property and replace missing items. The $6 million is in addition to the more than $3 million that Oregon government agencies reported spending on the operation. Yeah. So, a $9 million acquittal. Hooray. However, I just thought of a great way to deal with this, because it's... Okay, going back in a little bit of law history, let's bring up the O.J. Simpson trial. Okay. For, for how this can go on. So, everybody mm. is somewhat familiar with that, where you had, okay, all this going on, prosecutors, defense attorneys, blah, blah, all this stuff acquitted of criminal charges. How many people then remember him getting taken to civil court and losing? Ooh. Yeah. The Indian, the, the Native American tribe could now probably turn around and sue the Bundy clan for damage and destruction of their property, which they are loaning slash renting to the U.S. government and destruction of cultural artifacts. Yes, they could. So I think they out should go for enough people... money to build a casino. <laughs> or a school. How about both? Let's do both. Casino is under the school, or vice versa. Yeah, yeah. I one or one way or the other. Yeah, something like that. Um, we'll consult an architect. I'm I'm beside myself. I really. I, I think it's just, it's as simple as they tried to prosecute them for the wrong thing. But there was conspiracy. You know. <clears throat> they didn't, <laughs> they didn't just get drunk one night and go, yeah, there hey, was you, know, you know what's a good idea? There was conspiracy, but they conspired to do something that was just tangentially uh, connected with the actual question that was asked. Mm-hmm. I mean, think think of one of these big lawsuits, um, the trials, as a wish from a genie. You know, if you don't phrase that question just right, it's gone. They walk. They phrased it poorly. Mm. Which just adds on to the, well, why did you let him sit there forever? I mean, you built up all this evidence, and you blew it. Yeah. To millions of dollars worth of worth of overtime, and everything on yeah. people. So somebody's losing their job. <laughs> Not likely. Somebody that we've never heard of is going to lose their job. Yeah. Here's where. <laughs> okay, David, I'm starting to step into your territory a little bit here, <laughs> and. Yeah. And let's go, okay. Who got paid off? What behind the scenes deals oh. are we not aware of happened? Maybe with the judge, maybe other people going. Mm. So I'm gonna go with they picked an all Mormon jury. <laughs> that's a possibility as well. Or a lot of sovereignists. I I do believe that it was like nine women on the jury and, and the rest the the rest were men, which I found to be an interesting, interesting balance. Of course, you know, you can't show the pictures of the jury. No. Yeah, you can't do that. But I, I think that they definitely screwed up on the voidir, on that jury selection process. 
Oh yeah. So something something here is just or or the defense attorney did a just a remarkable spot on job of getting the people he needed. How much was the prosecutor paid to toss this case? Says asked Mama Man. Yeah. Yeah. Probably a lot. The Bundys do have some deep pockets because, well, they haven't been paying taxes. For 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well, I'm, I'm done with them. Are you done with them? Sadly, well, we're not, we're not probably done with not, them. but <laughs> for now. We're, oh, we're not. I think well, for sure not. Well, you know, us personally. Are we personally done with these idiots? Oh, there's far worse they could do. And will probably do in the near future. Oh well, we're not we're not going to forget them, and we're not going to forgive them, you know. But I think for now we ought to move on. 